And over here is Otis, the homemade elevator. Otis runs on a car battery, a boat winch, and an airplane altimeter, so I stop before my nose bleeds. It goes up to the bedroom, and you can't sneak up on me. I used to take passengers, but the husbands got upset. <laughs> It'll actually lift 1,500 pounds in case I wanted to take a really big woman up there. <laughs> This is my newest project, the lighthouse. I made it out of aluminum so that it would be a lighthouse. I had to build this to find my way home in the dock because we don't have street lights out here. And ever since it's been finished, we haven't lost a ship. <laughs> Every evening, I go way up on the top and I drink a Bud Light. <laughs> We're going to get some money off of Budweiser for that. Yeah, <laughs> I've got 22 minutes. Okay, I can, I can kill that in an hour. All right. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, first of all, I was born an artist, and I was always making things. And I had a cabinet shop in Pinellas County for uh, seven or eight years. And uh, then I moved to the Bahamas. I had art galleries, two in Freeport and one in Miami. And in 1972, I came to Hardy County because a friend of mine told me that this was like living in the past, which he, it was, still is. Mm. And, and uh, when I found out that I bought a swamp, I figured I'd better build something tall. <laughs> Palaces were much too expensive to furnish. And that's how Castle came about. I made it out of tin because I, I made it out of aluminum because I had heard that tin castles were for temporary kings and you have to rain before it rusts. And from there it evolved. It evolved. We decided that we wanted a boat in a moat. At the time I didn't know if it was going to be a gift shop or a restaurant. It didn't matter to me. I just wanted to build a boat in a moat. I had some previous experience in working on boats and living in the Bahamas for seven years, I was intrigued by how such heavy things can actually float. We, we built the moat out of necessity. Of, we needed a lot of dirt to fill in the swamp to build a castle on. And the, the moat's about a thousand feet long. It, it sur surrounds the greensward, which is the area around the castle. We also have a 10-minute nature walk, which starts out by the parking lot goes around to Horse Creek and returns on a drawbridge. You can see it from here. There's a drawbridge behind the castle. And we have a 16-minute walk if you want to do it twice, and, and a four-minute walk if you run. The other day, a lady saw a snake and did it in 30 seconds. <laughs> we also have, we have 90 acres, including the 23-acre orange grove. And my daughter is currently building a bed and breakfast. It'll ultimately have six accommodations and we, hopefully there'll be two rooms open in the next six months. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, yes. We, mm -hmm. we have uh, some pasture where my son-in-law and daughter have cows. We have a guest house over in the cow pasture and we have a studio, storage sheds, and we'll feel like we can tour all of that. Um, what's, a, you know, what's your inspiration for a sculpture? Do you start with a sculpture or a joke? No, I, I start with a piece of junk. Junk speaks to me. Mm -hmm. I'll look at a piece of junk and it'll remind me of something. And I'll, I'll say that looks like a gear from a locomotive and, and it'll go from there. What prompted you to start your artist series? I, I had been doing them for many, many years, but a couple of years ago I received a Get Well card with a Matisse on it, and I said that would make a real nice m montage, and it started from there. There's a collection of over 30 pieces now. This is going to be a Salvatore Dali. 
behind you. Behind you. Oh yeah, I was wondering what your source material was. Are you primarily All posters. Post dot com. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. great. <laughs> yeah, I just peruse the internet and yeah. on, on that website yeah. and order the posters. Huh. My next one is going to be one of me done in the Vigliani mm -hmm. style. Mm -hmm. What uh, type of paints are you using? Oils? No, they're all acrylics. Water base. Mm -hmm. I just finished building the bar cop. <laughs> See, when you want to drink the unspoiled headlight, you pour your scotch, you have your drink, and then you hide the evidence. <laughs> That's great. If you get too drunk to drive, you get towed home. <laughs> it holds a case of cans in the front. It has, of course, it's spears. And it has a, this is for locking the rear axle in case you get drunk on a steep hill. Well, where do you find most of your materials? In that building over there. I have my own <laughs> junkyard. Ah. Over the years, people have brought me junk, and I wish they'd stop. <laughs> These are all my old hand tools. I still use all of them. There's the band saws from the 1920s, and there's tools from the 1930s and 40s. This table saw came out of Disney World. They sell their tools every six years at quite a discount. Back here is a sheet metal. Do you like a pop art? Yeah. There's some pop art. <laughs> Those are pop tops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Seven varieties of pop tops. I, I, don't, I don't weigh enough for this foot pedal, so I put a hydraulic on it. It's a shear. That's a eucalyptus tree that broke during Hurricane Charlie. I had planted it 30 something years ago. It's a beautiful wood. Mm -hmm. This is an 1895 vice made in Kansas City, Missouri. It was on a farm in a junk pile. And this is the bed and breakfast on this construction. You can walk around the other side. Have you ever seen? Five gallons of military belt buckles. No. Great. Some place there's a regiment with their pants falling down. <laughs>